choose two indexes and swap their values. And it will do this a number of times. And that's it. All right? So let's just get going. Right, so we have an, uh, an array of ints. Let's say, um, you know, let me define some of those macros. So we'll have 10, uh, 10 integers and we'll have 10 threads, right? So int array of n, okay. And then, uh, the function that is going to be running the thread will look something like this. It will generate two random numbers. So we'll have, I think I'll have an... Mm, yeah, I'll need an i and then x, y, and z as variables. So I'll say x equals rand modulo n, y equals rand modulo n, and then all that I will do is say yes, Rashika, that's it. But let me let me go through this and then get to the synchronization. So now what I want to do is flip them. So I'll say z equals array of x, array of x equals array of y, and array of y equals z. This is what each function, each thread will do, but it will do it a number of times. So let's do this as such. For i equals 0, i less than 10, i plus plus. Right? So for 10 times, it chooses to integers <clears throat> randomly between so it's actually chooses two indexes and then swaps them now <clears throat> it is possible and it, and it did happen that uh, you generate actually the same index twice so let's make sure we we generate uh, different uh, indexes and do this All right Oh, you want to do that? Great. Let's do that. Sure. Let me copy paste. If it's if, if there's a bug, it's your bug, not mine. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to have overflows. Don't worry about it. We'll be fine. We have other problems to deal with. Oh. Wait a minute. You just pasted, pasted three instructions. I guess I only need two of them. No, it's good. If I need all of them, what's the point? Forget it. If I just need three, I'll just go with mine. Yeah, I forget it. Let's let's go with this. I'll I'll get into into programming tricks afterwards. I the, my point is not about swapping. It doesn't use an additional variable, but but that's fine. All right, yeah. Stop it with the value saw swapping that's not the point here so <clears throat> i'm gonna go write the main now create the threads and all that you need to think of how to synchronize somebody already suggested a good way of doing it great 
Thank you, William A.K. Death. For now, I'll stick with this because my point is different. All uh, right. <clears throat> so we need threads. P thread T. So these are the threads. We'll have T threads. And uh, I'll need a counter. So let's initialize the. Well, I don't care. I don't need to initialize the array with anything. Whatever is there is good enough. Let's create the threads. Oh God, you keep going on with, with swapping those values. <laughs> you enjoy this, don't you? And you know what? I'm going to pass to each... Well, no, not yet. We'll see. We'll see later. Okay, so we create the threads. We join them. And I think that's it if we ignore any kind of synchronization. Let's, let's compile this thing. Yeah, the random thing, I need to include stdlib. And here is a trick you might or might not know. This random number generator is not a true number generator. It's just an algorithm. And if you use it as such, every time you create, a, you, you run the program, you'll get the exact same sequence of random numbers. So what you want to do is... Uh, actually seed the random number generator there is a function called srand you'll see how i'm using it and you just need to give that function a number which is the seed of the random number generator so i usually pass here time of null which is the current number of seconds since uh, january 1st 1970 and then every time I run the program, more or less, if it goes in a different second, I will get different uh, a different sequence of random numbers. So let's see what, what is going on here. You make two threads, you give one A, you give the other B, you make the first one set of... <sighs> you guys. Yeah, current times in milliseconds. Uh, it's fine. We're good enough. With, with current time in seconds. <clears throat> so with this little with this little implementation, you now have 10 threads, then swap random positions in the array. So now we will need to synchronize this, right? How do we do it? It's <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's the pinnacle indeed. So how do we synchronize this? I would suggest that we actually have a mutex for each position in the array, since there is no need to log the whole array just to swap two of them. So let's have another round of initializations for mutexes this time. All right, so mutex initialized and mutex destroyed. All right, I guess you're with me. You seem to be giving up on number swapping. Uh, <clears throat> so now, how do I lock things? Basically, I would just say here something like this. P thread mutex lock of m of x and p thread mutex lock of m of y and then we unlock them maybe even do it in the reverse order so would this be a good solution for protecting our access to the array 
do you foresee any problems with this? Let's see. Maybe a thread looking for the first variable and another getting stuck. Yes, present. And yes, architecture. It is a trap, but the thing is how. So the trick is this will lock up. It depends on how lucky or unlucky we are. For instance, this time it didn't. Well, it, it locked quite a lot during the previous example now it doesn't lock anymore so let's try maybe to create more than 10 threads let's have maybe 100 hmm. seems like a deadlock but it, it deadlocked right away in the romanian version of the lecture now it doesn't so let's uh, maybe cycle here more than 10 times. Let's cycle 100 times, maybe. No luck, darn. And then, let me just see, have I initialized everything? I want to show you the deadlock and this thing wouldn't do it. No, the order of the unlocks doesn't really matter. Not in this case. Let's let's do this even longer. Here we go. Now it's stuck. I just needed enough chances. <clears throat> so now it's stuck. The question is why? And to see why, I will print out certain things, but uh, it's going to be hard to actually track them on the screen because now I have, I'm cycling 10 times. Uh, <clears throat> what may happen is that one thread chooses uh, 1 and 3 for X and Y, and another thread chooses 3 and 1 for X and Y. And then one thread locks 1, and the other thread locks here three. And then they're both trying to lock each other's mutexes that are already locked. And then they get stuck. Yeah, make N or N mutexes, that would solve it, but it's just a waste. And we have a much simpler solution, which I want you to see. So practically, what I could do, and let's see how it works. I could do something like this. Printf. have this waiting for this yes Rashika, that's true sort them so here it is our our problem is stuck so if you look close here you may find a cycle of people having something and waiting for something that somebody else has for instance, I have 0 and I'm waiting for 6. Anybody's having 6? This guy has 6 and is waiting for 0. So this may be a cycle. Then you also have... All right, so the problem is that we do not lock... The, the way we lock mutexes can lead to this situation of this guy having six actually uh you see it's actually even even tighter this guy is having six and waiting for zero and now this guy is having zero and waiting for six then we'll have another y one having zero and for six so the, the trick is that they wait for each other now uh Radishik, i think your solution was good actually let me just reread it Let's go back and see. <clears throat> so
So yes, per mon mo yeah, per monker. Uh, yes, we did swap the number of the, the, the locks. They're not in the same order, basically. Uh, Water addict, maybe protect both locks and unlocks with another lock. That is a that is a, a possibility. Uh, having n times n locks and always locking, yeah, that, that would work, but it's just a lot of locks. Yeah, but it would work. One thread took X, another Y. The first one wants the second. Yes, William AK death. That's exactly what's going on. This program failed successfully. You always want that when you try to prove problems. Sort X and Y, yes. That's the solution. That's the nice solution. Uh, your solution, Water Addict, would also work. I'll, I'll just explain that in a second. I just want to go through all the questions. You just delayed the problem, adding two more mutexes because you can get... What? I'm, I'm not convinced what Berzent is mentioning for now. But the problem was that different locks happen simultaneously. Yes, yes, water addict, that is indeed a problem. Can you use something like a struct with two pointers? A struct. Yeah, but it's still about the order. I'm not really sure how the struct would work. Uh, operating, yeah, swapping number scores. We protect the, the locks to ensure both locks, yes. All right, so there are two solutions here, actually three. But let's start from the problem. The problem is that a thread locks zero and wants six, but another thread or lot already locked six and wants zero. So it's a circle of two waiting for each other. If you're unlucky, you'll get a circle of many. One of them gets six and wants one, but one is already taken by somebody who has three, and one six, but six is already taken, so now I have a circle of three. One way would be to make sure only one thread chooses locks at a time. So if you protect this with another lock, then you wouldn't have a problem, because nobody can get the first lock <coughs> without getting the second lock as well, because only they would be in the critical locking section. But this solution is not always possible when you do when you when you implement adding another lock just to keep people out of locking. And it would be weird, but it is correct. Uh, if you go to n times n locks, then you would have to make sure I'm not even sure the n times n n, n square locks would do it. I don't think it will do it actually, because you need to lock the the one number, the, the two numbers that you're touching. You, if you have a lot of other locks, then how are you going to avoid actually working on that number simultaneously by two threads? So n times n locks will not work. Uh, so I'll just read this to more like a semaphore with a limit of one. Well, semaphore with a limit of one is a binary semaphore and it acts just like a mutex. So we should have like a mutex airlock. You could have mortuary, you could have a mutex airlock, but the, but the nicer, more elegant solution is to realize that if you always lock things in the same order, you will not get deadlocks. And this has been already mentioned by Rarishik, I believe, all the way somewhere up there. Something about sorting A and B, I think he mentioned. I'm already in the area of number swapping, which was awesome, but besides my point, so I well anywhere somewhere somewhere in the chat somebody said sort yeah here we go sort x and y that's the that's the solution most people use and it's really uh, easy as long as you lock everything in the same order doesn't matter which just choose one and use it consistently you are not going to get deadlock and it's always it's it's just like you're doing it for fifo now we get the question, what if order isn't always possible? There are different good solutions to different problems. Indeed. Uh, it's rarely, I actually have yet to, to bump into a situation where order was not the good solution. 
So sure, you can have a lock uh, protecting the locks, fine. But I never really needed that. It was enough to just pay attention to the order. <clears throat> So then, our solution for this uh, for this situation is really simple. It's something like this. If let's say we go the increment increasing order, if y is less than x, then uh, we have uh, z equals x, y uh, x equal y and y equals z. So we swap x and y so that we always start with the smaller one, right? And then there will be never any deadlock. Schedule, not necessarily, yeah, you could think of it as scheduling, but it's more like ordering. It's more like ordering. Not scheduling, you could call it, but it's not so much. So now if we run it, this guy is not going to lock. And this is all you need. Make sure you use the same order, just like for FIFO. Open them in the same order, or they, or they get stuck. So uh, you may get into very creative, de creative deadlocks. Uh, involving not only mutexes, but possibly read-write locks and barriers and semaphores so it you know it's it's a jungle out there but i still want to answer water addict who who would like to have uh, a solution a different solution with a mutex uh pro, sorry with the lock protecting the locking what I what I would like to offer here is that the way you figure out something is wrong with your locking is still noticing that you're not using the same order. That's the best way to figure that you 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 are running a risk of, risk of deadlock. So even if you choose to have a lock protecting the locks, because you cannot do it in any different way, although I haven't had that case yet, uh, you will still need to rely on noticing that they are not locked in the same order so the, the the order of the locking is the giveaway that you have deadlock risk how you solve it order it or other ways that's your issue but you need to understand that order is the problem and the solution but not only so let's see if there are questions here <coughs> if not this is pretty much what I've got for you today. The teaching notes are going to be updated probably this weekend. There are a lot of things going on that need my attention and I kind of postponed this since they are mostly examples and uh, you're not really at the point where you reach where you where you're being tested out of threads you still have the classes online and the notes will follow up uh, yes you will they, sh they they will be in the lecture notes all of them how can you pass geometry? I don't know. Study, study, study. Um, okay, the grades are, I, I guess the grades are assigned already. I just need to write a little program that uh, sends you a report of them. So I don't know. But next week, sometimes I guess I'll manage to do that. Because all this is being done on the fly as the but the pandemic hits us. How do you lock memory on the heap? I'm not sure where this is coming from and what exactly you need.
right so william ak death if you care to elaborate on that if not i'll i'll just stop the lecture i'm not sure what you what you're asking there okay a few more seconds waiting for a few more questions and then okay so here we go well for example if i have a dynamic array that uses pointer to memory on the hip how do i lock a data uh, okay So uh, may maybe you're making a confusion. You never really lock a data structure. You always associate a lock with your data. And by associate mean you lock the data before using your data. Sorry, you, you, you lock the lock before using your data and you unlock it after. You never really lock data. And this may be a point of confusion because um, you know, you talk about resources, critical resources, and then you lock the resources. But you never lock resources, you lock the locks. There are situations, like with the files, files can be locked. And so files would be a resource that can also be locked. You just look into FCNTL or FLOCK or lock F, and you can lock, you see, you'll see you can lock a file or a part of the file. Not enforceable unless you mount in a certain way, but you can do that. However, here, variables are not really lockable. You'll need to lock a mutex or a semaphore or something else, right? How different is the bash exam to the test today? <coughs> it, uh, well, it will be the same experience for you. It will be just somewhat more difficult. Regard this as, as the two put together in maybe a little less time, something like that. But this will depend on every lab professor who will um, customize things based on based on how he has worked with you. So the, the general guideline is comparative complexity to what is today or a little higher and a little less time. Okay, so I can lock a vector that I have on, on the stack, but if I have a non-deep copy of that vector, I can still use the second to get to the elements yeah, yeah, you, you can have the situation, absolutely. You, you, there is no way to lock a piece of memory. You can only write code that uses synchronization mechanisms correctly around the place where you touch that memory. So if you have a non-deep copy of the vector and you do things through that, well, you'll have to surround that in the lock as well. Otherwise, you're done. Well, you had 15 minutes per problem, right? Now you're probably going to have 25 for everything or 20. We'll see. Need to hit the Unix gym more often. Yeah, I hear you, bro. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, P5 is coming back. I am not sure what that means, but I'm I'm assuming it's all good because it's probably not. All right, guys, let's stop here. You you enjoy the rest of the day, and we'll uh, we'll hear each other next week. Good luck with the tests if you haven't had them yet. Good luck with the exam next week. Talk to you. Bye-bye.